I've acquired in life has a lot to do with words that we use around here called character defects. I didn't know that's what they were. I was breeded on those character defects. To be selfish was necessary in the world that I came from. To be self-centered and self-seeking, that's the only way I would get anything. I had to be manipulative. I learned that. Those were qualities. They weren't defects in any way. To be manipulative, a lie, a cheat, a thief was a badge of honor where I came from. I grew up in the projects, and it wasn't because it was the projects. It was just, this is where I grew up, and this was the life that I live in. What was going on was in my home. It wasn't even so much in the neighborhood. It was in my house. And it's very interesting when I look at my brother. He, he reminds me of a lot of things that I've forgotten because I lived 24, 25 years in a blackout. To this day, more and more is revealed of the relationships that I've had or the interactions that I've turned into. I was telling someone the other day, not too long ago, I went to a, a party. It was a premiere party in, in California. And during the party after the premiere movie, there's a waiter walking around. And I say to myself, my goodness, he looks familiar. But I can't remember exactly where I know him from. Maybe he's from the program. I just kept looking at him. And to add insult to injury, I go to him and I said, I don't know if you remember me, but you look vaguely familiar to me. Do you know me? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, no you. I gave you a ring. I asked you to marry me. <laughs> never seen you since. He was like, you're one of the reasons I have issues with women today. <laughs> I was like, man, that's deep. <laughs> and to work on that? No, but... And that's happened to me a few times, so I have always... My life is a blackout, and talk about having to make amends on the spot. <laughs> I was just in New York a few months ago, and that happened to me again, but the guy came up with some girl, and he was standing there, and he's, I'm coming out of the restaurant, he's going in, he stops and he looks and he goes, you don't remember me, do you? And I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Oh. <laughs> what did I do to you? <laughs> and I was like, it can't be that bad, because he's with this woman, right? So, whatever. <laughs> but he ended up going, no, you so and so's godmother. I was like, oh, okay, yes, I am. <laughs> So talk about, I've always been willing uh, to make amends wherever possible. <laughs> That's at a whole other level for me um, than just what I did today. And so you see, my life to me, as horrific as it sounds, as terrible as it is, we talk about incomprehensible demoralization, and I tell people that was my life. And I wore it well. I took pride in that life. I didn't mind walking up alleys at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I didn't mind sleeping with strangers. It was not an issue to wake up with Cousin It. I wasn't embarrassed to wake up with Cousin It. That was the norm. That was the role that I played. Many abandoned buildings. We talk about seedy places, lower companions. This is my life. And at the same time, I put a uniform on and I go to Catholic school. And I show up on Saturdays and I do my confession. And I sing in the choir on Sunday. And I take my Holy Communion. Because this is my life. I had my own business at the age of 14. It's a non-profit agency. And then later on in years, I'm down in Wall Street. And I'm working in the fashion industry. And I'm dressed in suits. And I'm all about the outsides. And I learned that no matter what's going on, I must always look good. I need to have my hair done, my clothes sharp, my makeup in order, my jewelry, everything on the outside must look as though I'm flawless. And I went out of my way to do that. I wasn't going to be a drunk like my mother. It's very interesting how I never saw myself like my mother. My mother's a drunk and she's a mess. But that's not me. I drink cabassier, I drink the finest wines, and I sip. <laughs> And you know what's interesting? I'm so grateful for good sponsorship in Alcoholics Anonymous. And the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Because if I was to compare my drinking with yours, I would tell you that I'm not an alcoholic. Because it has nothing to do with the quantity. I used to sip my drink.
drinks, and the most amount of drinks that I could ever get through was two. My tolerance level was two. I never went past two drinks. Only one time on prom night, we drank a bottle of peppermint snipes, oh. nasty liquor. I got sick to my stomach, and I threw up all over the place, never touched the stuff again. I'm grateful for the sponsor that I had to have me look at my relationship with alcohol to see that I'm just like a skid row drunk. Because when you've been drinking as long as I have, it takes you less. Alcohol is a part of my entire bloodstream. I don't need the chug a lug. I don't need 18 drinks. I'm already there. I never got off the high. My high never stopped. I've never come down. I've been drinking since fetus. So all I gotta do is sit. I just need a little bit to keep me flat now. <clears throat> Never had a heartbeat. I was not emotionally available. I had no self-respect. I didn't respect nobody. I had nothing about self-love and don't you dare tell me you love me. I hated those words. You better not even think about mentioning that to me. We don't talk like that. I'm not into having bonding, loving relationships. I don't mind if you leave me tomorrow. I don't want to see you again. I don't need nothing, and I don't need nobody. I didn't know I was angry. I didn't walk around like I was angry and bitter. I didn't need to. I had a smile on my face. Therapists were always confused about what was going on with me. They were like, your world is falling apart. You're beat up. You have bruises, and you're smiling. Thank God for alcohol. Because I would drink, and I would say, there is no problem here. So this was my life. This was my life for 24 years. And I wasn't planning on changing it. And I tell you, I didn't come to Alcoholics Anonymous for the consequences of my drinking. Consequences don't get my attention. I'm a real alcoholic. I don't run into situations like losing my babies. I've lost all my babies in toilets and in floors. And I don't sit on the toilet and let this baby come out of me and I'm aborting this child and go, oh my God, I need, I need help, I gotta go to AA. I don't wake up with a stranger in the morning and go, oh my goodness, I need help. I don't walk in alleys and say something is wrong. Consequences never got my attention. It's just that what happened to me, for whatever reason, I don't know why. But all I can tell you is at the age of 24, my lover, my companion, my friend, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my higher power, my everything in my life betrayed me at the age of 24. And that was alcohol. At the age of 24, alcohol stopped loving me. <laughs> And it stopped stroking me. And it stopped making everything okay for me. And all I can tell you is that I woke up into this world emotionally retarded. Spiritually bankrupt. With no coping skills. Present for an experience that I didn't know what to do with. Alcohol, you say, stop working. How dare it stop working? I have no other point of reference. I live in a state of oblivion, and now all of a sudden alcohol is not doing what it normally does for me, and now I am present for the experience, and to me that's different. It's different to be present for the experience. I hear a lot of people say, oh my goodness, I'm doing a lot of bad things now. <laughs> what gets me is that you're aware of it. Because <laughs> I did bad things for years, and it never occurred to me. I always burn bridges. I don't remember feeling remorse, or guilt, or shame. That's why I did it over and over again. I see the disease of alcoholism manifesting itself. That's what makes it so insidious. It's real cute. I have a neighbor. They moved recently. He had a voice of the program, but he lived upstairs from me. In my building where I live now, what was interesting was I was doing step two with a sponsee. And this gentleman leaves out the building at about 1.30 in the morning and he tears up the side of the building. And so when he comes back, all the neighbors are outside because he's just making a ruckus in our building. And when he comes out of his car, I tell him, stop the car when he pulls into the driveway. And I tell him, get out of the car. And he is so drunk. And 
I say, get out of the car. And all the neighbors are looking at him. I go, give me your keys. And he's looking at us like, what's the matter with y'all? Why are you bothering me? I'm not bothering anybody. And I tell him, give me your keys. Okay, you're not driving anymore for tonight. Just give me your keys and that's it. And I told my sponsor to park his car. We park his car and he's still looking at us like he doesn't understand why we're disturbing him. He gives me his keys, but he doesn't move from the car. And I say to him, what part of this don't you understand? I need you to go home and I'll give you your keys back tomorrow. And he says, you can keep the keys. I just need you to open up the door because my bottle, you left it in the car. <laughs> That was me. That's the insanity of what I suffer from. Now all of a sudden I just remember that I walked into a bar and heard somebody say, look what the trash bought in. How long have they been saying that? That still trips me up. Maybe they always called me trash. Maybe I always saw myself as beautiful and polished and ladylike, but they always saw me as trash and they always talked to me like trash. But I don't, can't tell you that they've been doing that for a long time. I just remember the day that I heard it. And something happened, like my stomach turned. And I don't know how to do that stomach turning thing. And I just started noticing that people looked at me like disgusted or something. And I didn't understand why they were looking at me funny like that. And my grandmother would look like really disgusted and just embarrassed. And, and I'm not like that. It's very strange to me. And then I noticed that daddy wasn't talking to me. How long did daddy stop talking to me? I don't remember when daddy stopped talking to me. I don't know what happened. I'm at a bar and I'm drinking and this guy is still ugly. And I'm looking at him and I take a drink and he's still ugly. And I know that he should have transformed by now. Because that's what happened. And now 